All right. So hello everyone. So today I'm gonna I'm gonna try to cover the chapter 12, 20, like a spaceship. This one is actually kind of a basically idea of the how we can import and export the data data into the Excel spreadsheet or maybe Google Spreads, uh, Google uh, spreadsheet file. Yeah, cause uh, we already done we already done with a lot of importing data like a text data, just kind of a plain text data like a CSV or TSV kind of thing. But in here we also thinking about the importing the other type of the data set, especially the Excel data set, which is the commonly used by a lot of uh, users, definitely. So I'm gonna try to um, uh, try to explain the how to import the this spreadsheet file into R and then how we can edit in those kind of things, uh, those spreadsheet if there is anything we have to edit and then also export it in. And also I'm going to cover, briefly cover about the how how we can uh, import in the Google spreadsheet and then how we can deal with it. So first of all, I'm going to try to start with this one. So in here, like uh, the other uh, this book actually suggesting about the, if you're interesting about the how we how to can, could you organizing the some data set in the spreadsheet they are actually kind of reading about the article the data organization in spreadsheet so mm -hmm. when you click the that uh that link you will may have uh, this kind of a uh, article and then you can downloading that one mm -hmm. and then it is just kind of a basically about the how you can try to organizing. The name or columns or how you can consist uh, make it consistently and then how you can develop the data dictionary etc so yeah it's a quite interesting to read but uh, so i just recommend you those you who are interested into reading this so yeah just feel free to check them out okay first thing i'm gonna try to start with how we can try to importing and exporting the access press it. So Microsoft Excel is, as we know, is the most of the common commonly used uh, used uh, spreadsheet software program for the data mm -hmm. analysis. So in R, there is actually uh two or three, actually more than three packages that are that allows us to the export and import the uh import the uh, Excel spreadsheet file. So in here. It actually mentions about the read Excel. This is the most commonly used uh, uh, packages that uh, when we try to import or ex uh, import the Excel spreadsheet file into R. And also there is another package called write Excel, which is the how, when you try to export your R data to the Excel spreadsheet file, okay? So these two packages are kind of uh, packages that we can use, especially for the uh, uh, com compatible with the tidy tidy burst package. So there is actually three different kind of functions you can use when you try to read the Excel spreadsheet file depending on the version of the Excel spreadsheet file. So maybe if you are have an Excel put uh, on Excel spreadsheet file version 2003. Before 2003, maybe most of the those files are gonna be the XLX format. In that case, you can use the read XLS kind of things. Maybe other than that, maybe most recently on Excel file actually have a XLSX kind of format as an extension, file extension. So in that case, we're gonna use the read XLXS. And also, if you want to use in all these two, I strongly recommend you to use the third one, especially for the read Excel function. This one actually does not. It doesn't matter about the, if you are reading the XLS or Excel SX, SX format, okay? It it just, it can be uh, importing both of them. So you don't have to worry about the, those kind of functions. So I personally think that recommend you to using the this read Excel file. Okay. And then how you can read the spreadsheet, maybe we can talk about this data set because whenever you go to the 
uh, that click the that link it gonna be show you about the about the data set and then you can feel free to downloading it and then uh, after you downloading it maybe let me import in the this library first and then you can just uh, importing the this excel file like this in my case i just downloading that file into the my download folder so i just definitely try to assign to the my detailed path from that and then when you go to the students you will see this data set comes up okay and then uh and then in here actually this book actually give us kind of a, some of the practice about the what's the wrong with the, this data set because first of all our this uh the column name is uh, kind of a, a little bit complicated and then a little bit un, in, inconvenient to use it so in that case is when we try to read the excel in here maybe we can actually do the another 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 option called column names and then equals and student ID or maybe full name. Yeah, you can just uh, just uh, designate uh, your own kind of a name like a meal plan and then age. And then when you do this, and then when you go to this one, you will see that your uh your column name has been changed. But the problem is when the column name is changed, the original col uh, original column name gonna be gonna be the uh, located in uh, placed into the first row. So that that is not what we want. Okay, so in that case. We're gonna try to do the right next to after the this column name function. We're gonna try to skip one. This means we're gonna skip the first row of the of, of when we importing the this one, which is the, the original uh column title. And then when we go to the students, now we have a right kind of a uh press it. But there is a still have a problem because when we try to looking at the some of the uh some of the data set, you will see especially for the when you're looking at the, this favorite foods column, you will see that there is a NA kind of things is a quite weird because uh, n dash n slash a does is not used in the R as a NA not available value. So in that case, we are actually adding another another argument called uh, NA equal to Maybe C uh blank and N slash A. And then when you open the students, we can see that N slash A gonna be changed to the now the correctly, like this, right? This is how you can just keep try to doing these kind of uh working on the this kind of uh access press in, in R when you importing the Excel, but, and also still we have a kind of a problem in here. Cause in case of the age, it actually, uh, data type is a kind of a character, but usually age gonna be tends to be the numeric value, not the, uh, not the character value. And also same with the student ID. Maybe we can just leave it, stu leave student ID as a double value, but we wanted to do the numeric value. So in that case, how we can do this? So after the, this NA one, and then we can just try to do the column types and we can try to do the one, uh, first one is the numeric and then second one is a character. And then third one is also character and fourth one is also character. And then the final, final one is the numeric. And then, uh, Oh, uh, uh, okay. Numeric, uh, text, I would say, not the character. Yeah. Text. Text. Okay. 
then why is still keep an error for this? But hmm. it's weird. Do you have any idea why this error come from? You have um you have a blank in the middle. Wait, let me make sure. Yeah, so ah, this yeah. okay. Yeah. And then now we have a right kind of things. But the problem here is actually uh, when we try to looking at the, this data set, we actually, when we go up here, maybe when we're looking at the row number five, we said in here it is a character called five, not the, not the, not the actual numeric numbers. So in that case, is maybe we can try to converting this one, changing this one actually numeric value. And then when we try to do, after that, maybe we can try to converting the age barrier, age column as a numeric barrier, but that might be the much more helpful. Okay. Uh actually in the in the book, when you uh when you're looking at the when we looking at the book in here, it actually says about the we can try to using the mutate function in here and then uh, by using the if else functions. It looks it actually about the if those five one gonna be the five in age. This is the how we can actually, you know, the uh try to convert the this character into the five and then and then try to parse the number. And after that we will have like here, we will have a, this kind of a double variable. Uh, but the thing is, I personally don't agree with the way the author suggesting to the mutating this kind of function, personally, because in this case, it only have a have a one one character has been identified because we only have a six row, right? Six observation of the data, and then uh, there is only one one error gonna be comes up when it comes to the age when we're looking at the age column right but the thing is if we have a kind of a thousands of the data set or maybe ten thousand or a hundred thousand data set and then there is a whole different kind of a pattern like this gonna be found how we can updating those things that might be the issue and then that's the not the way we can do by using this kind of approaches in this and in that cases, I think that it might be the much better if you can use the within function. Gonna be the much much better because the within function is actually come from the come from the base uh, base R package. But some but what is the bad thing about because I, I actually studying the this R for data science in this book, but the thing is uh one of the most uh things that I really hate about this book, I would say not the hate, maybe some critique about this book, is uh, this book actually very exclusive to to uh, just only try to using the all of the tidy burst kind of a packages. And then it seems like uh, all tidy burst packages is the one of the most convenient way we can manipulating or processing the data set. I personally don't think so as a kind of a basic R users, okay? Sometimes in this case, this kind of updating kind of approach is the too, too many lines of code here. And also it, it doesn't it doesn't make too much sense to me try to just try to keep correcting the only one kind of missing error to like this. It is not the right way to updating the things. Maybe if we have multiple errors that I that we can identify in the data set, how we can updating at the at once, that might be the problem. So maybe sometimes we have to be a little bit flexible about the using base R and tidy burst packages. But in this book, only try to rely on to the how only try to show 
show the how we can do this by using the tidyverse. Tidyverse definitely the convenient packages, but sometimes we have to be very flexible, try to using between the tidyverse and then the base R packages. Okay. That's what I thought. And then uh, I don't like about the, this kind of coding approaches to just uh, simply updating about the, this kind of value. That's what I thought. And then, yeah, because the reason why I suggesting about the more being flexible is because the data science here is the highly iterative process. But it would be much better if we can reduce the sum of the, our number of trial errors when we try to do the data processing, right? And then a tiny burst actually designed to reduce the number of errors or number of iterations. And then a, which is all very convenient to use, but sometimes we also should be very flexible about the using between the tiny burst and the base R packages. Sometimes base R packages also works very well and then sometimes a little bit faster than the tidyverse. That's what I thought. And then sometimes rather than using about the apply packages, sometimes for loop or while loop is a more, more straightforward that we can recognize about the how things going on when we try to do the iterative process. That is a one typical example that we can I can uh, suggest. So that's the kind of reason. So, but anyway, so this is actually another way you can, this is the one of the way you can do, but in my solution is the maybe suggest, I suggesting using the within packages when we try to use the, yeah, use the, these kind of updating approaches. Okay. Any yeah. other thoughts? Yeah, I was just gonna say they actually, like in later chapters in chapter 27, they do talk about base R a bit because like in the programming section, it's like functions, iterations, and then they mention base R. I don't know if they mentioned within, but I think that might be new to this edition of the book. Um, they're looking through the, like the old edition of that, but yeah, looks like they will touch on it a bit, but yeah, definitely, definitely, I guess this one, since like Hadley wrote it, it's more so leaning towards tidyverse, yeah. but. Yeah, there's value in data yeah. for sure. Yeah, right. So, and then, um, and then I also personally think that in here, actually, as a kind of educational purposes, it actually shows us about the, how we can try to editing the spreadsheet in R by using the this kind of a set of the line of the code in here, right? But Personally, if you don't, if you are not familiar with uh, these kind of approaches, okay, I just uh, personally recommend you just open, open the Excel and then editing, edit, edit your spreadsheet in Excel. That is the, my recommendation. Okay, because this one is actually educational kind of purposes. And then this one actually show this chapter actually shows us about the, how we can do this by using the read Excel kind of functions and then uh, try to introduce the whole set of the argument about the, that we can use to manipulating or pre-processing that is access press data file, right? But in reality or in practice, it is much better to the before we before we read the that access press it file into R, maybe we just the downloading the that access press it and then open that one in Excel. And then uh, if you can find any kind of uh, uh issues that you can think uh might be problematic when you if you open that file as it is in R. You just the editing that press it in Excel. That is a more, more, more straightforward way we can do. Just I just wanted to talk, I just wanted to talk about the more reality in real real world practices, not kind of educational purposes. It is also a good way to do that, maybe if you're also familiar with these kind of approaches. But sometimes 
it is much better you can try to rather than the using these kind of approaches just to open the excel file in in excel and then editing that specific file in excel and then open that one by using the read excel function going to be the much faster way sometimes especially when you try to deal with uh, maybe a hundred thousand of the data set maybe excel filter function and uh, filter function or finding and replace function going to be the much better way you can edit in the beta processing by using the read excel function and then I try to try to listing about the, this kind of a set of the arguments yeah I might be a, a little bit too critical uh, critical about the this section but this is a just kind of a how I think about it in practice so yeah just feel free to uh, regard this my thought as a one of the option you can choose okay what I wanted to say in here is that just kind of being flexible even if we already we are from we know about the, these kind of approaches okay this one just kind of a, you just think of the, this kind of a, approaches as a one of the option you can choose all right and then how to read the worksheet because in here it actually also mentioned about the uh, another expressive file about the penguin expressive file so in here uh these are the penguin expressive file and then uh, it actually has the three different kind of a uh, individual press it in inside the work uh, inside the file right one is the Trugerson island and the one is the Bisco and dream island right these are the all three different press it inside the one single file maybe when you just uh, using the this uh lead excel file as it is and then when you go to the this one maybe only the first uh uh, first, the uh, spread is going to be the show up, not the second and third one, right? And then uh, how you can try to do that when you try, actually you wanted to import in the maybe second or third spread file. That is uh, an, an argument called the uh, seed. And then you can say that maybe not the target and maybe when we type the dream island, right? And then go to the thinking, you can see that that dream island space is gonna be the imported into R. Another thing you can do is actually, um, when you, when, oh, okay, sorry about this. When you, when you're looking at the, this in here, it, these express it actually uh, organized by the name, and then we can directly uh, uh, type in the this name gonna be allows us to the importing the each express it. But the thing is, Excel you can also read read the this express it as a kind of an index number. Cause uh, first the in, first the express it is the index number is one and two and three etc okay so in that case rather than the using the this uh long type of the name of the specific when you try to just the, simply the type type three that is actually the third index number is a third or uh, three in that dream island the specific it also can allow you to the open the same kind of a space same kind of a specific okay so maybe if you know about the what kind of uh you know about the index number of the each expressive file, maybe index number gonna be the much helpful. Or maybe maybe if not, maybe you can just uh, type in the that expressive name to open the that specific expressive. Okay. Okay. And then because uh, this one is how we can open the these things. But I personally say that the uh, red uh, instead of the using this Torgesen Island, maybe we can also try to do that. Maybe seed is one, and then we can use we can also do the same same way we can do, and then also other process is the almost the same, cause the read accent and just uh, using the this NA 
uh, NA function to the replace to the all of the not available variable uh, record into the this NA kind of a uh, uh, record like a, like a designate uh, changing editing, right? And also we can listing about the what is the expressive file we have in here when before we open that one and then uh, you can see that this one is the index one index two and index three okay and then you can use the index number after this so that's the kind of a way you can do and then uh, reading the part of the uh, part of the seed is uh, also very simple because as you can see here when you're looking at the, this data file, there is a, a lot of a uh, uh, redundant kind of a text uh, at the start and then the end of the spreadsheet. When you try to importing the this Excel spreadsheet as it is, there might be the, a lot of a messed up kind of a situation gonna be happen. So in that case, how you can open that one? You just uh, try to make a make a range of the spreadsheet from from the left top left to the bottom bottom right designating the this cell number okay in here so name actually name column is the a5 right and then and then the right top uh, uh bottom bottom right is the f15 right which is the date of the death right so by designating the this uh top left and then a the bottom right kind of a cell as a range, we can try to open that file. But uh open that file only for the desperate file by using the this range function. Okay. And then you you can use the this colon to to representing the, the range. Okay. That's the how we can do. And then also, as we can see, we can try to try to detonating about the, this kind of a, uh, data types. Uh, we already covered this one. And then, and then writing to the Excel is the also very simple. Whenever we have a, this kind of a simple table, what we can do is just kind of a uh right typing the that uh data data frame uh tidyverse data frame and then just just detonating the path and then the file name as a as a right xlsx right and then uh and then a column setting the column name and then a format header is gonna be the force that means we can actually have a uh, this kind of a uh, uh row name uh column name at the top and then a uh, no no row name in the here okay that's the how you can do that and also you can just uh uh import into the that was the csv file like a comma delimited file and then uh, open in excel I think that uh, uh, this is the most of the it about the, this is a just kind of a simple exercise. It is also very easy to solve. So I don't, I just uh, try to skip this one because uh, it is just kind of a simple practice about the how you can change in this one is the NA and then uh, this one is the two and then uh, making this one is a numeric, et cetera. So, so that's kind of things that we can do. And also this one is so changing as an NA, right? This. Okay. So any questions so far? Not at the moment. Okay. So now let's move to the Google, how we can import in the Google Sheet. Okay. As you know, Google Sheet is a free and web-based kind of a approaches, right? And then uh, there is actually library packages called the uh, Google Sheet Sheets 4. This one is actually based on the uh, Sheet API uh, version 4 from the Google. And then it allows us to the importing to the Google Sheet into R, okay? So how you can uh, load in the this Google Spreadsheet? 
it actually quite quite complicated because when you looking at the this uh this link at the top and like a fan game for example you can easily find that the all of the this uh this i this one this one is the kind of a uh kind of a information contains the information about the unique id of the specific so what we have to do is the we have to using the this id by calling the this id we can actually open the google seed file into r so maybe in this example we have to uh, uh, uh try to do the authentic uh, authentication about the google spreadsheet to use it and then uh, when we try to recognize the this id and then we can using the read seed function and then we can directly read the that google seed file into r directly and then also the same thing, like as we did with the uh, uh, read Excel, there is also a different kind of function, like a uh, changing the column name, skip the first column as a column name, and then uh, NA replacement. What is the one different thing about the column type designation? Like a uh, DCCCC means kind of like a double character, 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 and character. So it is a more kind of a pretty short code designation to 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 define the uh each data type of the each column in the in the seat okay so and also when we have a when we have a penguin uh google seed file we also simply uh designating about the seed uh name to call uh, to importing the this uh, some specific specific file inside the inside the google seed or maybe you can also use the index number like a one, two, three or something. Okay. Uh, and also the same thing for the range. So most of the these uh most of the these argument is almost the same as the lead Excel file. So you can also feel free to using these things uh when you're working on the working with the Google Seed file. Okay. Yeah. I think that this is it. So it is a very simple chapter about the how we can importing the Google spreadsheet and also access spreadsheet particularly. And then Google, in case of the Google seed file, maybe we can try to do this one uh, like this. Uh, in the, the, just like uh, using the read Excel function. But what is the what is the issue about the when we try to open the Google spreadsheet is if that spreadsheet file in the Google seed file is the kind of a public public authentication kind of things, maybe this only simply type of the this the authentication process gonna be allows us to the using that spreadsheet file. But the thing is that sometimes when you try to have a access need to be access to the some of the private data set into the Google seed. Maybe you might need uh, some of the authentication key in here. Okay. In that case, it is a little bit inconvenient to use in. So, but my bottom line in here is whenever you have an Excel file or a Google seed file, just the downloading it and then just the import, uh, just the uh, editing or data processing simply simple data processing should be done with the Excel or, or Google Sheet, and after that maybe you can just uh, read Excel using using the read Excel function, and then you can import in that one into R. That might be the much faster way or straightforward way you can do sometimes. But anyway, this uh this chapter actually introduced about the all different kind of options you can do. When you try to importing and dealing with the uh, that spreadsheet uh, data processing in R, okay, in R only. So that's the kind of things. And then I think that this is the end of the chapter. So do you have any question?
นั้นสมเนียอันนี้วันนั้นเออ